they stuck, Lordo, mm. all through. The three key leaders were tested and they were strong at the time, even when they hit 15th. I think Bossy is one of the best things to happen in Carlton Footy Club in a long time. He's an outstanding leader, outstanding person, sensational with the players. Um, we saw what he did last year with uh, getting the group going. Didn't quite get there in the end. So got absolute belief in him and in our coaching group. Absolutely. Vossi is our coach through to the end of next year. Uh, Michael Voss has been a tremendous asset for this football club and uh, we're looking forward to doing great things with him in the future. No, Michael Voss's uh, future with us is, is a three-year contract and he will be with us until at least the end of next year. He will coach round one next season? Absolutely. Don't you love to see it? You know, and now this is five to 7,000 people at Icon Park today watching them train and stability is a, a word that gets thrown around a bit, but they, the stability, and I know what it meant to people within Carlton who worked there, that when they were at their lowest, the support they were getting from Brian Cook and Luke Sayers to say, don't worry, we're 100% behind you, things will turn if we keep at it, and Michael Boss Brad Lloyd's decision people. making was being questioned. Yeah. Brian Cook's mm. seniority and did he still have it was mm. being questioned. Andrew Luke Russell. Sayers, mm. there was talk about how Luke Sayers, you know, should be stepping down and there was board upheavals. Mm. All three backed each other. Yeah. And we were all uh, in our various ways among mm. some of those critics. I don't know about you, Matthew, mm. but certainly we were. Mm. Good luck to them. Mm. Good luck to them. And Walsh has had a huge final series, your man. Well, He's elevated his game. How many times do we see, oh, the play didn't do a pre-season and that's an excuse for poor form? Well, nine months ago, this guy had part of a disc in his back removed and he's come in in round five and just been extraordinary. So I, I think it just goes to show what a professional he is off the field and what a role model he can be for other players who haven't done a pre-season and still been able to impact. There he is at the bottom of your screen. The thing I like about him, he's really honest. When the ball's in dispute, he doesn't hedge his bets because if Melbourne won it there, He's going back to support his defence. As soon as he says or sees that Carlton win it, he's off and he pushes forward. And the only area of his game that you could have been critical of is that he didn't do this enough. So to bob up and kick two big goals in a final at critical stages, there he is. He doesn't go until he knows that Carlton have won it and then he goes and he goes hard. So I think it's a real lesson to any other player that gets injured during the preseason. Still work really hard because you know you can come in and have an impact like he has. Do you know he was challenging behaviours of teammates in his first season at the club? So he was challenging training standards and professionalism. He is one of the best footballers in the country. And I the mean, best trainer. I know, can do I know, he can. Caro, but you've got to understand the yeah. seriousness of his, his oh, surgery. It took him a while to get going this year. Yeah. He's well, really peaked at the right yeah, time. Yeah, like his first game back, yeah, he had 28. Five. Then he had 30 in, in yeah. round five and six. So uh, it's a credit to him. But, but, but yeah. is their health going to be an issue? Yeah, I think, Caro, it is. Um, there's you know, banged up players uh, at Carlton. So How do you balance this, Lordo? Do you, do you be loyal and give him a chance yeah. or do you make some hard calls? Oh, I think he'll be loyal because Akers was sore the week before, played another amazing game. The worry with Doherty, they'll play him, but that can pop out again and again and again. Once they get loose, they just keep popping out. And this guy's been playing great footy. Look, the bigger challenge than that, oh, Hutch, is are they happy that they've got to a prelim? So often when you come from nowhere, you go, what a, what a job that we've done. Versus Brisbane, who are up there and saying nothing but making a grand final. Did you think they over-celebrated? Uh, not over-celebrated, because sometimes, I don't mind... Um, in a sense, came because... Uh, they won the game in the last minute. No, I'm I, know. I know, but the scene's in the... I'm not, I'm not suggesting yeah. that, oh, but there has okay. been some suggestions. Because I know Damien Hardwick said to his players before the grand final, you've already succeeded in my eyes. And some people thought, geez, don't say that to him yet. But they still went on and won the grand final. Brisbane are going to put goals on them. Mm. And Carlton are going to find a way to go, mm. don't they? Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. And I'm looking at, uh, well, this is their, their, their scoring lotto uh, yeah. that you wanted to look at. Yeah, and I just wanted to say, yeah, they've won two finals because they're a great defence, but they will have to put up close to 100 points. So find another four goals to beat the Brisbane Lions, Hutch. And the Lions themselves. Yeah. Unbeaten there this year, uh, points for 100, Caro. It's the biggest home ground advantage in the competition, clearly. They'll go in as massive favourites, oh. and deservedly so. Kane, and you wouldn't play Harry Mackay? I, I don't think I would, Lord. I, Jack Martin picks himself, but I, I, I can't trust him in, in a final to do that. Now, structurally, I think Michael Voss has said that he will play if he's fit, but I wouldn't play him. I think what they're doing, and I think they're a better team without him, just to, just to be brutally honest. A better team yeah, without him? On, on a normal day? I, I think his issues can infiltrate the psyche of the group. If he's missing goals in the first quarter from 10 metres out directly in front, I think it's an issue for them. Um, and, and I think they're playing pretty well. So you don't it. think he takes pressure off at all? You, you I think, think he, he adds up. pressure. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're saying they're going to play him. I know. Yeah. I don't think they should. Well, they have to play him. Why? Well, they've got seven years and $7 million tied up in 
him and they got a premiership. They got, in, a, they got a premiership to win, Hutchie. Charlie's not in, in great form. The final spotlight and the uh, forward line is among the issues in the, in the spotlight. So I want to look at uh, Charlie Kuno. So since round 24 when he won the Coleman medal, which was great scenes and you know, we're all barracking for this to happen and what a season he has produced. This is a celebration. He puts the two fingers up, two in a row, I've done it, and then he's heading back, which, which is good. But since that moment, he's hardly touched the footy. So there's the two fingers. That should be for two goals since he's won that moment. And not only that... His opponent has been best on ground. So Buckley beat him after that moment for the rest of the three quarters. McCartan was Sydney's best and May was the best player on the ground. So not only is he not impacting, his opponents are having too much of a say. So the spotlight is on him because reputations are built in finals and he's yet to enhance his in big games. I don't see any weaknesses really in the Brisbane Lions. So the final spotlight for me is... I'm on Carlton. Where can we expose Brisbane? And I think their wingers are sensational, Carlton. So Jasper Fletcher, I'd be saying, how can we expose a seven or eight gamer or a ten gamer uh, with a Doherty or an Acres? And how, how can we get him? So he was sensational in the final, but can we physically outwork? Can we target his wing? And, and with someone who's got a bigger body up against a young kid in Jasper Fletcher, because I think they do use their wings extremely well, Carlton, with Cottrell and and also Doherty and Blake Akers. So, small little thing, but uh, something they can potentially go after. And I like what they've done with the team. Yeah. Like, I've been a critic of them, but yeah. they've added some bit of flair. Speed, flare. speed, they've added. Speed. Yep. Uh, oh, and Dunkley's been one of the recruits of the year. Um, and imagine if they had Ashcroft. Yeah. I mean, how no one gave him five votes in the Rising Star, I still can't understand. Well, maybe because he missed a large portion of the season. Missed about five or six, six games, games at the end. It's a, it's a large I thought Rising Star season. was about the calibre of the player, it's not the, games played. No, it's about the best season. Extraordinary. I mean, She's or just one of best and fairest? One of the top 10 players in about 10 of their 15 games that he did play in or 17 games he played in and they finished second on the ladder and no one gave him best. What, I, I what can't understand it. Uh, he, he finished second. Hmm. Yeah. Extraordinary.